Bruce Lawn. Recently, astronaut Terry Verts went on the Joe Rogan podcast. Now, if you don't know who Joe Rogan is, biggest podcaster in the entire universe, my man Joe Rogan is so big, he got Spotify to create a video option just for his podcast. I don't think anybody else got videos of their podcast. I don't got videos on my podcast on Spotify. I would love to have videos on my podcast on Spotify, but we don't. But Joe Rogan does. And uh, the full episodes dropped there. I haven't seen these clips chopped up on YouTube, so I'm going to play you guys two parts that I want to react to and um, and talk about... My thoughts on these. So, um, Terry Vertz is an astronaut. Shout out to all the flat, flat Earth people. Don't don't you get weird in my comment section. I know how y'all get. But, uh, so, uh, this is on Spotify. This is going to be two clips. And I think you guys will appreciate it. Uh, just because, again, we don't see a ton of Christians on Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is extremely influential. You, you would call him a modern-day thought leader, philosopher, influencer, whatever you want. Biggest podcaster in the world. Um, he's a comedian. And he says some stuff here that's good. But what I like is Terry Virch's response to this. Okay, what I like is Terry Virch's response. Before you were an astronaut and a fighter pilot? So he, asked him, he said, he asked him if you were a Christian before you were an astronaut and a fire pilot. Okay, that's... That's, yeah. When I was a kid, I, I kind of made that decision on my own. Um, so, yeah. Is, is that, um, is there pushback against that at all in, in science and in, in, in dealing with these experiments that you're dealing with? And yeah. Being, a, you know, someone who's in space. Right. So, I think some people take religion and try and torture science to fit their view of religion. In the 1600s, you know, the Catholic Church used to kill people if they said the earth wasn't the center of the universe. And that's not what all at all what Christianity or the Bible says. There's it says very little about it. There's like a page or two in Genesis that basically says there was a beginning. First there was light, and then there was stars, then there was a planet, and then it had basic life and then more advanced life. Like if you read the Genesis creation story, mm -hmm. it describes what happened. It describes mm -hmm. it in the language of 5000 years ago. Right. It's not a cosmology textbook. It's Two, two pages out of a thousand page book. And it, what he says is he says, Genesis is a three page account out of, you know, multiple thousand page document written in the language of 5,000 years ago. Really interesting how he talks about this. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, because there's gonna be some of you guys that feel like science is in conflict with faith. There's gonna be others who feel like if you believe in a literal creator that's in, that's in conflict with science, there's gonna be all types of views. Now, what's interesting about Terry Vertz is he's, he's Again, he's an astronaut, he's genius, he's cream of the crop in terms of, you know, not a lot of people get to become astronauts. How many astronauts you know? I don't know any, right? But the way he answers this question to me is very telling because what he doesn't do is he doesn't get in the weeds about evolution and this and that. And he just says, hey, listen, it's a three-page account written 5,000 years ago. There are Christians who hold a literal seven days of creation, right? And uh, and they think that is the only way. And if you don't believe in a literal seven day of creation, not a Christian, you're, inher you're a heretic, you're an error. Then there are Christians who lean towards an old earth view, meaning that that day in Genesis, if you actually look at the original language and you just go to pull up Blue Letter Bible, you look it up and you say, hey, um, what does that word day mean? And it, and it actually is a different word for day than other parts of the Old Testament that mean a 24-hour time span. It's a different word day there. So they say, well, you know, when, when it says that God created everything, it wasn't a literal seven days. Why is that important? Well, because if you trace it back, the new earth Christians would say, hey, this is a 6,000-year-old earth and everybody say well no what are you talking about we got fossil fuels we got dinosaur bones there's no way dinosaurs existed six thousand years ago it's impossible right and all the science just overwhelmingly doesn't seem to to, to kind of prove that right as, as far as we know and they would say well you know god could have made the earth in billions of years and it doesn't have to be a literal six days of creation it could be millions and billions of years it's a way of kind of reconciling science and then there's others who say, well, God could have made the earth in six days, but maybe he made it old. It's kind of an interesting position, right? And, and then there's others that go even further that say, hey, the Big Bang, which is science supports it, proves that there was something at the beginning. It proves that something caused everything in motion, and that would, you know, they take the the six-day account as, as more allegorical or maybe they hold an old earth view, right? 
Nevertheless, I don't, I don't, by the way, I don't think this is a close handed thing. I do believe that Adam and Eve were literal people. Why do I believe Adam and Eve are literal people? Because Jesus spoke about Adam and Eve being literal people in it. And I trust Jesus because Jesus rose from the, from the grave. So what Jesus says, I'm going I'm to trust that. The rest of it, I don't understand how it all works out. And so I wanted to break that down. And I like how Terry uh, Vertz asked, a, answered this question. Now let's go back to this clip because it gets really interesting. So Einstein. So Einstein didn't believe that at all. He believed that the universe, the steady state universe, and he eventually said it was the worst mistake of his life, but he didn't think there was a big bang. He thought everything just was for, forever. Mm. So Einstein did not believe that there was a big bang that initiated the universe. He thought everything was just forever. Okay. That was Einstein's point that he just, everything kind of always existed, but listen to what he says. So in some ways, ironically, it kind of says what it is, but from my perspective, I just want to learn the science behind stuff. And I don't get, I don't think it, I don't think it conflicts with religion at all. I mean, I think just learning about stuff points to somebody really smart who's had something to do with making it all. Learning about stuff points to somebody really smart who had something to do with making it all. Why are we intimidated by science? Why are we intimidated by biology, by psychology? Why are we intimidated as Christians? Now, I'm not saying you need to go in and, and, and uh, uh, accept the macro evolution, uh, whatever, right? He's just saying, I like learning stuff, right? I like learning about stuff. I like learning about science. And if anything, it reaffirms that as amazing as this entire universe was, someone really smart and really superior created this entire thing. Why are we so intimidated by science and education and learning stuff? Really good point here. Really good point. Let's get back to this. These people that lived 5,000 years ago that had this perception of things beginning and then the, the universe existing, like they talk about God making the universe in six days. Like, yeah. I think when we're talking about things like that and you're getting translations that are thousands and thousands right. of years old. And we don't even, no one even speaks those languages anymore. Right. You know, like ancient Hebrew. Like this is Joe Rogan revealing himself to me that he does not have a lot of Christians around him because he thinks that all Christians and all people of faith believe in a literal six days of creation. I, you know, again, ignoring that there's a strong position, like a strong amount of Christians that hold to an old earth theory based on this ancient language and that word day for the six days in Genesis being a different day in the Hebrew. Again, go do your own studies, go, go go grab the Blue Letter Bible app, look it up, look up the word day, and then look it up in other parts of the Old Testament where the word day is used. And you tell me, is it a different word? Because it clearly is. So this to me just kind of reveals that Joe, unfortunately, isn't around a ton of Christians, which is kind of a bummer because he has a lot of opinions on this stuff. So let's keep watching. And here's the thing, six days and what inertial reference frame. Because six days, right. six days for you was different than six days for me on the space station. Y'all ain't hearing this, man. He said six days for you was different than six days for me out of space. Did you know that space and time work different depending on where you're at? Wow. Right. So he, he's kind of hinting at this. Hey, those six days may have not been literal, right? Those six days may have not been literal. Okay. There's a chapter in my book about relativity. I actually well, age so, less than Now, there's this other clip I wanted to show you guys. I marked it. And you guys should really go watch this full interview. Again, shout out to Joe Rogan for, you know, having a believer on the show. Well, there's some religions that are horribly repressive and they'll right. never criticize them at all. Right. Because they're scared of being labeled uh, Islamophobic or right. labeled, uh, you know whatever figure out the religion whatever religion it is that, right that you're there's some religions that are oppressive but people don't criticize them because they're afraid of being labeled islamic phobic or whatever and he backs off from that point right and watch what he says you're discussing people are, are worried about that but they're never worried about criticizing christianity right criticizing christianity is like a free token did you wow. it's encouraged yeah right? it's and encouraged it's, right but um, criticizing other religions, you know, then you're racist. It's, right. it's very strange. Joe Rogan, who's not a Christian, just said that criticizing Christianity, it's open season, it's encouraged. 
you say something about a different religion, which he says there's other religions that are oppressive, right? And he kind of like, we know what he, we know what he was talking about, but he backed up, right? <laughs> but he backed up. And he says, but you know, criticizing Christianity is okay. It's encouraged. Wow. That's really interesting. So out from one point of view, you see someone that, you know, clearly isn't exposed to a ton of Christians, which by the way, I'm praying for Joe and I'm praying for more people on the Joe Rogan podcast because he does seem like an open, open-minded guy. At one point, he doesn't seem extremely uh, aware of just different views within Christianity that, that could be viewed as reconciled with science. Um, but from the other point of view, he's also self-aware and tapped in enough to know Christianity gets an unfair rap in society. It gets demonized. It gets made fun of. It gets scrutinized much more, much more than some of the other religions that we know are just like flat out oppressive to women. Other religions that don't believe that God loves all people. Like there are religions that don't believe God loves all people. There are religions that, right, they just have a completely different version of the creator uh, than the version of uh, the, the God of the Bible, specifically Jesus in the New Testament. So I think uh, I think that's that's really dope that he, he was honest in that statement. And I appreciate him saying that. And I just, I wish that one, there was more Christians on there and more Christians in the mix of culture who do fly stuff like become astronauts. And then two, I, I would hope that we could be more honest about this culture of tolerance that's not tolerant to Christianity that 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 is very dismissive towards Christianity and I think it's really cool that he acknowledges that and uh and I was just encouraged by that I wanted to share that with you guys again my position is some folks just haven't heard the gospel I don't know if Joe Rogan's actually heard the gospel yet the gospel is good news. It's not, it's not a hang, it doesn't hang on the edge of is there a literal six days of creation or not? There's a again a diverse amount of views in that, right? The gospel hangs on the person of Jesus coming to this earth, which is more or less a historical fact. All scholars believe Jesus was a real man, real person, right? Who lived a life that was disruptive to the religious people to the Romans, and, and was then martyred, predicted that he was going to get martyred, and then rose from the grave, bodily rose from the grave. And the claims of this are in the New Testament letters, which are viewed as a solid historical account of what happened, specifically the Gospel of Luke, specifically the, the writings, the epistles of Paul. But the claims of the New Testament are by and large accepted. And the claims is quite simply that Jesus rose from the grave, bodily rose from the grave. And then Paul escalated it to the point where he said, if Jesus didn't rise from the grave, that we are to be the most pitied of all people. If there is no resurrection of the dead, if, if, if Christ didn't rise, then, then that's what all of Christianity hangs on. All of it, right? And so, um, that is what I, that is what my faith is based on. That is what first Corinthians 15, right? That is what my faith is based on. You guys should read that chapter. It's an amazing chapter. That is what my faith, my faith hangs on. Not was there a literal six days of creation. And if you, if science disproves that dinosaurs were around before 6,000 years, then you throw out all of Christianity. And there's literally people that have formed their theology on a fundamentalist view that the six days in creation are literal. And that when the moment they see evidence, real evidence for dinosaurs, their faith disappears, right? Their faith disappears. And so that is what my faith hangs on is, is that Jesus was a literal person. And I'll go deeper. One thing that, that, that even if people can say, ah, there's not a ton of history for, 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 for Jesus, even though there's secular writers that wrote about him, claimed that he was a real person, all this kind of stuff. Um, there is an overwhelming amount of history for this man named Saul of Tarsus, who was a Pharisee, having a radical 180 experience where all of a sudden he goes from being a Jewish Pharisee to being the biggest advocate and the biggest advancer of this, this Jesus movement in the New Testament. And, and the writings of Paul 
are by and large, this man was was a like historical figure. If you're wrestling with some of this stuff, if you were wrapped up in, in like, ah, how does this all get reconciled? I would highly recommend a resource. I came to the faith as a skeptic, by the way. I didn't come to the faith on some, I grew up Christian, didn't grow up Christian. My family's Christian. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Not, no one in my family is born again but me. Um, and obviously like my wife and my family now. But I would encourage you, check out the book, Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. It's a book. There's a documentary and there's a theatrical release. Check out that book. Um, if you're if you're wrestling with some of this stuff, if you're wrestling with some of the lofty questions and what about this in the Old Testament and this thing right here, da, 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 and your mind is, hey, that's literally, I came to the faith like that. And what I was convinced of is that Jesus is who he said he was, that he lived the life, that he died to this, you know, died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he, uh, and he ascended. And he ascended. And there is a resurrection coming. And there's a new heaven and new earth coming. And, and I'm excited for his return. Whenever that may be. So that's what my faith hangs on. Um, the rest of it. You know. Literal creation. Whatever. I'm. I'm. I'm I don't know. You know. I, th I think there's a creator by the way. I think Adam and Eve were literal people. Why? Because Jesus spoke about Adam and Eve as literal people. That's why I believe the literal people, right? I want to hear from you guys. Do you guys, because there's people out here, you know, straight up that believe that in order to be saved, you have to hold the literal six days of creation. And that can make it extremely problematic for the scientists, the astronauts, the astrophysicists, the biologists, right? Anybody that's been to the daggone, you know, uh, his, natural, Museum of Natural History in New York. I've been multiple times. I don't tell my son that Adam and Eve walked with dinosaurs, right? <laughs> He's like, oh, there's dinosaurs. Yeah, there's probably one of the other days of creation and they maybe died. Off. I don't know how it works, son, but yeah, there's dinosaurs, right? You see what I'm saying? So I want to know, like, do you, do you guys think these are essential? Yeah, I think it's a secondary issue. I don't think it's a salvation issue. I think this is an issue of discretion and however people want to view it is cool and you know someone like terry verts might even you know be open to different forms of you know i don't know i I, don't, I, heard, I didn't hear him talk about evolution on this but they get into a lot of interesting stuff how complicated the eyeball is right to, like they, that that is evidence that there was a designer and all these different things so watch that interview it's really cool maybe i'll do another part anyway i want to hear from you king stream entertainment bruce lawn yeah, conversations front of the fireplace. All of my mistakes out of wire race. Wanna operate at a higher pace. Birth pains causing the body to dilate on a first name basis with the worst pain facing. Moments in isolation. See, I was hoping I would do this to get more family time.